Okay, so uh, to give an outline checklist of how to do self-inquiry on my own. Well, you know, if I'm to be brutally honest, I do like being guided by another person with inquiry. And the way I would do it uh, to make it easy on myself, I mean, I've shot a lot of videos on my YouTube channel, Sabia Muslim, it's my YouTube channel. Uh, they're called the Observer Tool. Yeah. If you just go into my channel or type Sabia Muslim in YouTube Observer Tool, you should get, I don't know, hopefully 5, 10, 15, 20 videos. Um, uh, so it's really, really nice to hear the questions from someone else, like what's observing the thoughts, what's observing the body, what's observing the feelings, you see, and hear that and do it in real time as it's being spoken about. So that's one way. I mean, I quite enjoy having a, like in hypnosis, I'm a hypnotherapist, you have someone guiding you, you listen to the voice on a tape, and uh, it's it's very nice then rather than, uh, but anyway, that's one method. So there's a, there's a listening to someone else or a guidance video on inquiry uh, on YouTube. Uh, the other way to do it, just I mean, if you haven't got access to that, even though nowadays, even on a mobile phone, most people do, you can do it on your own without even uh, any prompts. So the way to do it is to, cl I would close my eyes and just become aware, number one, close your eyes and become aware of what, what is being experienced. Usually the types of phenomena, uh, usually if you're new to it, the types of phenomena are you might feel tension in the body or pain in the body. You might become aware of the thoughts, whether they may be going at 100 miles an hour or, 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 or whatever. Uh, so the thoughts, the body and feelings are some of the gross ones. Later on, you can... Anyway, let's start with the basics for a new new person. So, okay, you close your eyes. I'm aware of a, like a tightness in the throat. Um, I'm aware of some thoughts about money. Um, and uh, okay, so there's thoughts of money and there's tightness in the throat. So, the, for example, that's that. Re you know, one of the ways to, uh, if you're new, is to just orientate yourself before you close your eyes. Just observe around the room. And just notice experientially, like there might be a table there, a chair there. Just notice that there's witnessing of the table and there's absolute clarity as as there's observation of the table that uh, on, a, on, an, on an experiential level, the table is not to you. It's ridiculous to think that an object being witnessed can be you. It's a meaningless object that you're not, there's an absolute knowingness there is absolute, um, the you know, there's an ex it's hard to use words. There's an experiential knowledge that the table is not what you are. You're not limited to being a little limited object. So when I say table, I mean it's an object. It mean it's got a, it's so tall, it's so wide. It probably looks like it has such a density, but it's not you. So you so there is a custody. So now, what about? So you close your eyes, you become, okay, let's say there's tightness in the throat and there's some thoughts about whatever, it doesn't matter. So tightness in the throat is actually like a table. It's just a, it's just an object that's being observed. If there's not detached obser observing of it, then that, that's the process of inquiry. Am I the table? No, I'm not the table. So the, the process now of inquiry, it's not intellectual. It's like, okay, there's awareness of um, of, of a... Uh, of a uh, tightness in what seems to be the throat area. Now, look, is there something that's watching or observer or deeper awareness of that, which is aware of the tightness in the throat uh, and can, and is witnessing it and is not, and there's, uh, hopefully there's a detachment, that there's clarity, that that thing, that shape of t what seems to be a projection of tightness in the throat is not you. And as you go deeper, and then forget being identified with the throat sensation, go deeper into the observer, sort of detached, like it's meaningless, and go deeper and sort of incubate, sort of um, abide in the observer, abide in the limitless stillness within. So you're just, so it's like, um, it's like a, hmm, it's hard to use words, it's a repositioning or a re, uh, a re, um, it's hard to use. It's, it's just allowing oneself to be that which is always there before objects. 
once you experience it and just rest in that. And as you go deeper and want to be deeper in the the witnesser or, or even a deeper witnesser, which is not identified with anything external, the throat will suddenly disappear or start to get vague, like it's losing it's losing its power to to draw atten attention or identification. It's disappearing out. Now the now the thoughts thoughts are liber you know most people who haven't done this are very addicted to thinking. That probably is one of the worst um, the worst things in Western civilization: the addiction to being in the head. So you've got to recognize um, as, uh, that. Um, become aware that that there are thoughts. It's like and I can share my experience. It's like it's like a TV set of thoughts, and um, and the, these thoughts are bobbing along like a very interesting, addictive TV movie. Uh, you know, or what's the next uh, exciting, fearful, or horrible, or exciting thought? You know, you can have a you can have a jam tart. What is that a good idea? Or oh my God, the bank's going to take all your money. Um, you know, so it's like a drama, a drama TV addiction show. And uh, these thoughts, and then when I go to the witnesser of all thoughts, these passing thoughts, oh my goodness, there's a witnesser. There's something that's watching the thoughts, but is not thought. Before the field of thought, just like Einstein said, you know, you, you can't escape thoughts at the level of thinking. You have to go to something deeper beyond all thoughts. So you can't think at your way out of thinking. It's never going to work because you're still in the problem. So you've got to become aware of that which is prior to thoughts. Oh, there's a deeper witnesser, you know. Otherwise, um, uh, you're not you're not going to make it because you can't stop thinking by being in your thinking. You have to go to a deeper witnesser. Oh yes, that's a spiritual awakening. There is something deeper that witnesses thoughts where no thoughts exist. So as you go deeper into that witnesser before thoughts, then all the thoughts start to slowly disappear and lose their, uh, without identification, they lose their existence. Identifying with the body and thoughts and feelings uh, feeds the energy to make them exist. As you go deeper into the observer the, and reside deeper in the infinite stillness, then the, the energy that, you know, the ego's addiction to being in objects out there is just is like cutting the juice off and they just disappear into nothingness which is really what they are um so that's that <clears throat> so those are the basics uh, the body you know the body what about the body oh my god the body's feeling quite tired and exhausted or whatever it is and there's a f now here's the thing it's a spiritual awakening uh, actually it's part of my should I, should I save it i was asked for another question on the body okay now, if you go, if you become aware, you, now you've got a sense. I think most people have got a sense who are identified with the body. I've done a lot of work on the body. Oh, it's like, it's so tall. There's awareness, like it's so wide. It's a, there's feet over there. So it's not infinite. It's a shape. It's just like a table. So something is aware of how tall it is, how wide it is, where, you know, that it's feeling tired. So it's actually an object, and all objects can actually be observed, because if it was infinite, it can't be observed. That which is beyond limits cannot be observed. But if it's limited, so there is there is an awareness or an observing of the shape of the body. So you go, okay, what's observing the body? And it's a spiritual awakening. Aha! There's a witnesser of the body. That's not the body. And as you go deeper into the witnesser, the body disappears. It's just another object, like a table. So that's the, the body. Okay, so this is like an introductory. I mean, later on, as you become more advanced, you can go to the witnesser of uh, time, the experiencing of time, the witnesser of location, uh, the witnesser of sounds, uh, and go to even deeper witnessings. But the, the, those are the basics. Um, the, the more you practice this, you can listen to this video. I'll, I'll post it on YouTube. Um, the more you listen to this and practice this, you're deleting the illusions and the addiction to just uh, being identified with things you're not. You're not limited to being a body. That your true self is not a, is not limited. Your true self is not limited to being a body or a thought. That all thoughts, by their nature, are limited. They're not infinite. No thought can be infinite because a thought is, by definition, limited. Uh, the body is not infinite. By definition, it is limited. So recognizing your eternal 
as St. Francis says, it's in the death of illusions, shall we say. It's in dying that one is born to the eternal life, the life that can never die and is never born. And that is your truth. Uh, and um, for me, only the truth can set one free. What is limited can't set one absolutely free because it's limited. It's it's an object, you see, it can't be. Uh, it's a trap. So um, that's an introduction <clears throat> to it uh, and a sort of a mini checklist. And you just sort of, uh, it's practice. It's not intellectual. So I'll stop there. <laughs>